Hi guys, my name is Israel Ajayi and welcome to this channel. On today's video, I'll be walking you through the world of production, basically about how to get cinematic footages. I am pretty sure you're ready to film your first project and you don't want a crappy looking video, you want like a professional looking video. I mean, at the end of the day, that is what we are here for, a professional looking video. Now, if you stick with me to the end of this video, I'll be telling you three major tips that you need to master to make sure your video are absolutely great. Now you're ready to shoot. You are considering what kind of camera you need to buy. Uh, good. One thing I would always recommend is don't get overwhelmed by cameras. Don't get overwhelmed by the lenses. Don't get overwhelmed by gears generally. All you basically need to put in mind is your lens and your camera body. And when it comes down to the option whereby you need to choose between an expensive camera and an expensive lens, I would advise you to go with an expensive lens. It is a combination of fairly cheap cameras. Needless to say, I'm not saying you should not go with an expensive camera and an expensive lens. I'm just recommending if you're just starting up, you don't need to like go for the expensive, expensive thing. Just go with what you can actually afford. And if it comes out to the option where you have to choose between an expensive lens and an expensive camera, I would recommend you pick an expensive lens. The reason why I'm actually saying all of this is because there's a whole lot of videography than just the gear on its own. You still have like the framing, you have um, compositions, you have lighting, and the list goes on and on. So with that in mind, you don't necessarily need to overwhelm yourself with gears. For those of you that are using mobile phones to actually shoot, I mean, you can still stay and watch to the end of this video, so you would actually understand the basics of what um, a cinematic image would actually look like. At a point in time, you would want to advance from using your mobile phone to shoot to using an actual camera to shoot. So this video is actually for you. Because in this video, you will learn the ropes of using an entry-level camera, which also applies to whatever camera you might actually find yourself to. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the bare basic kit you need to shoot. Camera. It would be nice if your camera has an option for interchangeable lenses. Starting out, it would be nice if your lens has a wild focal length. In that case, you can shoot in different focal lengths. You could shoot in 20, you could shoot in 30, you could shoot in 50, you could shoot in 70, as large as your focal length can be. It would also be nice if your lens have image stabilization option. It would also be nice if your camera also have the option of attaching external microphone to it so you can actually capture your audio from an external mic. Another thing that would be nice for you to have is your tripod stand. For you to have a steady shot, you know, shot that is not looking shaky. I mean, you're just starting out. You would want to master the act of framing. You would want to master the act of composition and the like. So you need a tripod stand. Another thing that would be nice for you to have is your SD card. Your SD card to record your footage in and to make sure your footage is actually safe. Because what's the essence of having all of these things without having an SD card? There's a saying that goes like this. 50% sound, 50% visual. If your audio is bad or crappy, your image, no matter how excellent your image is, yeah, nobody's gonna buy it. Now, to really sell a cinematic image, your audio has to be absolutely great. Cinematic audio, cinematic visuals gives you a compelling, absolute great image. Now, with your camera in place, I'm pretty sure you're ready to film. But before you press the record button, stay with me. Always shoot in manual mode. Whatever camera you find yourself using or whatever camera you're using right now. This will help you push your camera to the extreme. You can use all of the function of your camera. If you're shooting in auto mode, there is a limit to how you can actually use your camera. You won't basically have access to using the full potentials of your camera. This is the reason why I would advise you to shoot in manual mode. Well, now that we have that taken care of, you also need to understand what camera framing is and shot composition. Shot composition actually helps you with the way you tell your story. Now, we have different types of short compositions, which I would list right here. Mastering all of this would help you convey whatever story you're telling the right way. Another thing I want you to be in mind is also your lighting. Lighting is key. Right now, I'm actually lit with my window on my left hand side and nothing more. On this right hand side, it's a beer white wall. And in my head, I imagine like the light traveling from this point is bouncing on the wall here, and which is in tune giving me a few like here major things you need to bear in mind is your key your fee and your backlight when it comes to lighting your key lights this is my key light right here on this side of my screen you get and this is my few lights which is the light bouncing off the wall of this place and the backlight whatever color you're seeing at the back here i imagine is my backlight so those are the basic structure of um, lighting your key your fee and your backlight and knowing this rule you can actually break it this is just like the basis of you know having to get a cinematic image less is more start simple then work your way all the way up now the whole idea now is whenever you like turn on your camera about to shoot 
you put in mind that whatever you are pointing your camera at has to like tell a story either from your lighting or from your composition or whatnot make sure when you point your camera and you're about to roll you're telling a story basically and if it's an interview it's all good it's all fine you just point your camera just the way the camera is right now and you're good to go but if you are trying to tell a narrative or you're trying to follow a story if it's a wedding video you know you're trying to follow like the groom the bride you're trying to follow them into into the into the church or wherever they're actually having their event you know you want to like follow the movement of the of the event you don't just want to be shooting while the wedding the bride and the groom are walking into the into the altar you don't want to find yourself shooting somebody eating amala or eba some you know you have to be where the story is basically and if it's for a documentary as well you also have to follow the narrative of whatever you're actually shooting don't look at me i highly recommend an entry-level camera which is the likes of the sony a7s or the canon cameras which are the likes of the eos r series and the like these cameras are cameras that you can actually use to you know, start up your journey i will leave in the description a link to where you can get a very good lens camera and gears in general now stay with me if you enjoyed this video i would love you to give it a thumbs up share with your friends and family film entities content creators and the likes i would also appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel it's gonna mean a lot to me now let's talk about the camera settings that is going to help you get to the market immediately. I know I said I'm going to mention three settings before, but I'm feeling generous. I feel I'm going to add a couple more. These are the settings you need to master to get to the market images. First, your aperture. The second one is your ISO. The third one is your shutter speed or shutter angle. The fourth one is your frame rate per second. That's what we call the FPS. Wide balance. And the last one is your resolution. What is resolution? Hold on, let me check. Camera resolution tells us the level of detail your camera can actually provide. For instance, you can actually shoot at 1080, you can shoot at 2K, which is double of 1080, you can shoot at 4K, which is double of 2K, you can shoot at 8K, which is double of 4K, and it goes on and on like that. So basically, that's what the camera resolution is. I think I shoot at 1080 right now. So if you're watching from YouTube right now, you're watching at 1080. Aperture is basically the eye of the camera. It regulates the amount of light that it allows into the camera sensor. What is the sensor? The sensor is that base that receives and absorbs the information that it is getting from the light. Aperture is equally also known as the f-stop. Higher your f-stop, the darker your image. The lower your f-stop, the brighter your image. In most cases, you go for lenses that have lower f-stop and they might be fairly expensive, but they're actually the best. Now you can think of your aperture as the pupil. The downside to an aperture is your depth of field. The depth of field is how blurry your background is in relation to the subject which is in focus. ISO is basically how you can digitally brighten your image or darken your image right inside the camera. Now, the downside to it is if you brighten your image in a dark environment, you tend to have noise and grain and this static shh television noise. Your image generally just look muddy and messy. The rule of thought for me is while I am shooting, I actually make sure I manage to shoot between the ISO of 100 to the ISO of 1000. Anything above, I can still push, depending on the type of camera I'm actually using to shoot, I can still push to 1600. But anything above that, I mean, I tend to like try to ignore. Let's talk about shutter speed. The shutter on your camera is how long you expose an image to the world via the sensor. Using a DSLR camera as a case study, you can see the stuff that looks like an eyelid and the way it blinks. The moment it is actually open, the sensor is actually capturing an image. The moment it closes, it is done capturing the image. This actually brings me to your frame rate. Ideally, industry standard, if you're just starting out and you're just getting into this world, I don't want you to really stress yourself with, okay, what particular frame rate is good for this? What particular frame rate is good for that? The industry standard is actually 24 frames per second. With 24 frames per second, you would have a cinematic image, no doubt. So that's what directly affect your image motion blur. Now, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, it is ideally advisable that you shoot at twice your frame rate. As this is to say, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you make sure your shutter speed or shutter angle is at 1 over 48. And if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, shutter angle or shutter speed should be at 1 over 120. If you decide to put your shutter speed or shutter angle below your frame rate, your video becomes dreamy. I mean, it's an effect that you can actually buy into. If you're trying to tell a story you know, that conveys something of such idea, if you crank up your shutter speed or shutter angle above your frame rate per second, then your image becomes very jittery, sharp, and you know, I mean, there are effects you might want to achieve, and that is like the direction you want to go into. It is not generally bad. If you know the rule, you can break them. Lastly, white balance. White balance actually tells your camera what is actually pure white in the image, and this helps balance your image the right way it should be. 
if the white in your image is off your image will start looking funny that is why some videos you watch some videos you see the video look maybe bluish or it just looks off generally to the eyes i'm not talking about when you probably grid your image and you, you are turning into that direction i'm talking about in camera correcting your image the right way and there are few ways you can actually do this some of your cameras actually comes with a preset that you can just pick uh, which preset you want to go with depending on the kind of story you are telling and where you're actually shooting at the time it will be very nice to actually familiarize yourself with the kelvin temperature of light this will help immensely when it comes to lighting and also in your camera as well if you're just starting out in this field i want to employ you to shoot as much content as you can shoot because knowledge practice and experience will give you the required skill to shoot professional footage if you enjoy this content i appreciate it if you like it share with your friends and family filmmakers content creators and the likes I'd also appreciate you to subscribe to this channel because it is definitely going to mean a lot to me. Until next time, my name is Israel Ajay. Peace.